All right, so here are some good hip and core stabilizers for you. Uh, Terry Gibb at ITC here, and I'm gonna show you how to do a great warm-up to help with hip stabilization and core strengthening. So what we're gonna do is you can choose to use resistance tubing or you can skip the tubing part and just do uh, no resistance to get started. We're gonna start with clam and I'm gonna have you lay on one side. We're gonna do 30 second sets. So for my 30 second set, I'm going to stack my hips on top of each other, shoulders stacked on top of each other. My tube is slightly above my knees if you're using a tube. Once again, you can get rid of the Versa loop if need be. You can order those on powersystems.com uh, and they're very inexpensive. So we're gonna work in 30 second sets. So my goal is to keep my hips stacked. I'm gonna open up my knee and then lower it. The goal is to strengthen the glute med and the hips. I'm making sure that I'm not rotating my hips backward. All right, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and do this real time so you can just do this one with me. Here we go. We're gonna rotate up and return. So I'm focusing on squeezing my glute med. I'm pulling in my pelvic floor. So um, I'm making sure that I'm thinking about pulling in the muscles um, that hold, hold it all in and tight and strong in the pelvic floor. Shoulders stay stacked tight. There's no movement. If you cannot perform this exercise without rocking, then you need to put your back up against the wall and take away any resisting resistance. All right, that's our first set. Now let's go to the other side. And we're gonna do a 30 second set on the other leg. And here we go. So my hips and shoulders are once again stacked. I can tell because I'm not rotating backward into um, my hips at all. I'm just loading through the glute. If these muscles are tight, you might not have a lot of range of motion, but you just want to make sure those hips don't move at all. So you can do 20 reps, or you can just follow along with me. We're doing 30 second sets. Next step, we're going to do a glute bridge. You're just going to roll over onto your back and lift your hips, squeezing through the glutes. So we're going to turn over onto our back, and you can do this with or without the tube as well. Pushing through the hips, Shoulder blades are back and down. Feel your buns. Squeeze through your glutes. Strong, strong, strong. We're gonna spend a little bit of time on this one. Working through, feeling the bottom of the tush. Stay strong. Pull the pelvic floor up. Holding tight. I'm gonna show you a progression for this. Here we go. We're gonna extend one leg, keeping the knees equal distance apart. Notice that my foot is directly extended from my knee. It's not up here. It's straight out. Okay? If this is too much, just return to both feet on the floor. But I'm firing just by lifting my left leg, my right glute only. 30 second set. Core stays strong. Pelvic floor stays strong. Breathe. Switch legs. 30 seconds on the opposite leg. After this set, if you have a tube on, we're going to remove it and we're going to work on the inner thighs, your adductor muscles. Breathing. So I can really feel it on my tush. And I can tell one leg is weaker and one glute is weaker than the other. Can you feel it? Sometimes my clients cramp up when they're doing this. So what I tell them is, A, that muscle might not be very strong. You might need to just start backing off just a little bit. Go ahead and stop. Also to check hydration levels. All right, so now we're gonna work on the adductor, the inner thigh. So it's going to look somewhat like clam, except it's reverse clam. So clam was working this hip. Now I'm gonna work the inner thigh muscle. All right, so we're gonna bring the bottom leg up to the top leg, like that, okay? Still keeping those hips stacked. Notice my top hand came forward just a little bit. And I also feel that I have to tighten up through my oblique the top area. Ready? Here we go. 30 seconds. <coughs> a lot of times my clients are surprised because they'll find one of those adductor muscles works really well and then we go to the other side and it feels much more challenging. And that, my friends, is called imbalance, right? That's what we're working to um, adjust here. Good. We have about five seconds left and we're going to do a quick switch and do the other side. Good, quick switch, get ready, 
30 seconds on the opposite side. So remember, we're gonna turn on the upper hip, right? I'm stabilizing with my glute bead. This hand is down, and then we come up and down using that inner thigh. second sets. I feel myself bracing through my core. My inner thigh muscles are fired up. Good stuff. We've got about five seconds left. Shoulders stay stacked. Not rocking. Good. And now we come straight to a plank. So in plank position, the goal with plank, you want to make sure that you're actually setting your core properly. So I keep saying pelvic floor, that's really where you squeeze, literally squeeze your anus and squeeze the pelvic floor in and up. That's the bottom of your core and it's important for um, longevity, incontinence, um, and it is the base for your core. So make sure you're pulling in tight, okay? So when we go into plank position, the first thing I want people to think about is their tush, their pelvic floor, and their lower abs, okay? Now, what does that mean? How do I position myself? Well, you want to position yourself in a way that's easy enough to fire those muscles. They are the core, the foundation. They need to be strong. So the first thing you do is squeeze your butts, okay? We're going to start on our knees. Shoulder blades back and down. Palms pressed um, into the floor. So I'm not just leaning on my elbow. I'm not just leaning on my wrist. We squeeze the glute, come up into plank position on our knees first, okay? I'm starting the timer. Let's do that. Now, if that feels great, I want you to press into your toes and slowly lift your knees up and feel your core engage, okay? None of this, hip should not be up, bottom should be even. If you feel like this is too difficult, go back to your knees on the floor and squeeze your buns, squeeze your pelvic floor, and think of your spine being long this way as well. Reach the top of your head towards, um, away from the mat, or away from your feet. Great, relax, that is your 30 second plank. You can repeat that again, either on your knees or on your toes, depending on where it is that you actually feel the muscles that we're trying to really engage or focus on right now. The next one is your side plank. Same concept. You may start with your knees on the floor. So remembering that when we start like this, I've got my shoulders stacked and my hips stacked. Here we go. Top hand reaches up. Perfect position. Advanced, you're here. Okay. I personally am weaker on this side. Boy, I really feel that. That's great. I might stay here. Or if you want to advance it and you can still feel all of the muscles working properly, you could go ahead and lift the top leg. So we have three different levels. We could be here, here, or here. Three, two, one. Break. Good. And then we're just going to do this one on the other side. So here we go. Get ready to get set. Up into plank position, side plank position, and go. So I'm here, I'm here, or I'm here. Either way, I still feel my core pulled in, I feel my obliques firing, I feel stable and strong. It's totally fine to be right here. If your right side is not as strong as your left, I advise you to use um, the exact same technique on both sides. Don't go advanced on one side and then take it down to beginner on the other. Just stay at beginner on both sides. We're holding strong. Two, one, and down. And that is your hip and core assignment. Try three rounds of this. You can just stop this video and re, um, replay it and follow along in real time, or you can just time yourself. Have, have a great day.